Hello guys, my name is Dr. Possibility from Excel Academy and in today's class I'm just going to explain some concepts on uh, rotational work, energy and momentum. So in this case I'm just um, focus on a um, few questions from one of the uh, universities in Zambia. So the first question is saying a force of 2.2 Newton acts tangentially to the rim of a solid 52 kg disc that has a radius of uh, 32 centimeters. So we have um, a force which is acting on the given rim. So we have a force and then there is also a rim. So this rim has a mass of 52 kg and a radius of uh, 32 centimeters of which this 32 centimeters is the same as 0 0.32 meters. So how long does it take to accelerate the disc? So meaning how long does it take to make the disc to rotate? Okay. So, um, from rest to 210 revolutions per minute and then the second one is saying through how many revolutions does it take during this time okay so let me quickly uh, go to to my solutions let me just quickly go to my solution so i also have the second question which i'm going to do with you okay so if you look at the question you're going to discover that in this question we have this guy who is uh 210 revolution per minute per minute so this is is going to help us to find the 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 angular velocity of this uh guy remember this um, rim had to rotate from rest to this angular uh, velocity. So the best thing for us to solve this question is by first changing this guy into um, uh, into radians per second. Okay. Let me just quickly do what I've just explained. Okay. So from there you discover that one revolution is just equal to um, 2 pi. One revolution is just equal to 2 pi. So this formula is just helping us to find um, the, the revolution or the final angular velocity in radians. Okay. So if we quickly do this, like I've said, so let's use this relationship uh, to find the radians. Okay. So we're going to have this relationship which is one rev is just equal to two pi one rev is just equal to two pi and we have been given 210 revolutions per meter which will just be equal to x so using the direct proportion method so we at this point we are going to use the direct proportion method let's check it out so if we use the direct proportion uh, method you're going to discover that this friend of us will be a um, will be equal to 420 okay so if we work out that we are going to find that our x is just uh, 420 meters per uh, 420 pi rad per meter okay so from there now we can quickly um change because if you look at this guy it is in minutes so it's very important for us to use the si units which are just uh seconds so we need to change these guys into the si units so that we have the revolution per second okay so if we work out we are going to find that um let's treat what we are working out as our y so to do so we have just uh, divided by 60 second per minute so that minutes and minutes can cancel okay so when we divide 420 divided by 60 we are going to have something like seven so we have seven by rad per second so we have changed the 210 revolutions per second to rad per second okay so let's quickly look at what we have been given 
so what we are looking for is time what we are looking for is time and for us to find time we need to look for relationship that are connecting time to this equation so we can quickly look at angular uh, acceleration so if we were to find um, the angular acceleration since we have found the angular velocity so we can easily uh, find the angular acceleration using the following formula okay so let's look at our angular acceleration formula so angular acceleration formula is just equal to so it's just equal to um, change in angular velocity over time the same way we do linear that's the same way we do um, uh, we do uh, angular uh, values so we are just going to say angular acceleration is equal to change in angular velocity over time so uh, we can also find angular acceleration using a, a relationship between angular acceleration and also torque okay so torque is just a force which is acting on an object which is moving in circular motion okay so if we find the relationship you are going to find that angular acceleration is just equal to torque over um, moment of inertia torque over moment of inertia so let's quickly write down uh, this formula using the units so torque is just equal to um, uh, torque is just equal to angular acceleration times a uh, moment of inertia so when we talk of inertia inertia this is just um, the ability of an object to resist change in its uh, motion all right so i'll quickly work out this so when we work out this uh these guys you find that we can easily find another formula which is force times uh radius we know that force times radius that's equal to uh torque okay and then when you talk of a uh, moment of inertia in this case the moment inertia it is always given so in this case our moment of inertia is mm, half mr square that's what i've worked on there okay let's quickly uh work out these guys so um angular acceleration can also be said to be equal to 2 f m r okay how have we come up with that we have just work out these guys so r squared and r there so that r and r will go there and then since this is division 2 we'll multiply by f so we are going to have that uh, equation so um if we quickly work out that we replace our our force which was given which is a uh, 2.2 so the force which was given it is 2.2 in the question and then we know the mass it is 52 and the radius of the rim is 0 0.32 yeah this 0 0.32 meters it is coming from the 32 centimeter which we were given so uh if i was to quickly work out that using my calculator i'm going to find that my angular acceleration is equal to that okay so that's my angular acceleration so since we have found the angular acceleration we can easily find time using the first formula okay so what was our first formula so our first formula was angular acceleration is equal to a uh, change in angular velocity over time okay so if we work out props without any mistake we can easily plug in our values whereby we say time is the same as uh, angular um, angular velocity over angular acceleration 
So we have found angular velocity and we have also found angular acceleration. So what we can easily do is just to work out using the values we have and then when we use the values that we have we are going to find our time to be equal to 83.1 seconds okay so then you have simply worked out that nothing more nothing less okay now um let's quickly go back and look at question two let's quickly go back and look at question two so a cylinder of radius 24 centimeters is mounted on a horizontal axis coincidence with the cylinder's axis a cord is wound on the cylinder and a 100 gram mass so this gram has to be changed into uh, into kg and when we change that one it's going to be 0 0.1 uh, kg if i'm not mistaken and then this 24 when we work it out is going to be 0 0.24 meters okay mass is hung from it after being raised the mass drops 180 centimeter so this is our height which is 180 centimeters and this 180 centimeter we can change it into meters yeah in 1.5 second okay so we have a certain object falling down so as it falls down you need gravity is working on it and you also need to consider the linear uh, acceleration okay so find the moment of inertia of the cylinder and the tension in the cord where the mass is falling so if you look at what is happening to this force you find that um there is a cylinder and this cylinder for it to move there is a force which is being caused by something which is hanging from it and this something is dropping down so we can easily work out using the equations so let me just quickly go down so let's quickly look at the equation of motion for the mass and the cylinder okay we have not been told what this mass is so we can quickly work out that okay so we can say uh mg which is mass minus tension is equal to mass times acceleration so we know there is a tension in the rope there is a tension in the rope and there is also the gravity which is working on it and that gravity is causing this force so this is a force mg which is caused due to the force of gravity and this guy we can say it is the mass okay and then this mass we can also look at minus t what is t coming where is it coming from this is a tension in the rope this is a tension in the rope because this mass is hanging from a cylinder so the tension in the rope is what we are calling t and mg is just the weight of the rope okay and then ma is the acceleration okay um and we know that torque is equal to uh force times radius so we are also looking at torque the force remember the the mass is falling down so as this mass falls down there is uh, a tension in the rope and this tension in the rope is causing the the torque in the in the cylinder and this torque is making the cylinder to move round okay so very easy to to relate all right so uh as i have said torque is equal to force times uh radius okay so torque is equal to force times radius now what is this force the force is just the tension the force is just the tension okay so if we quickly work out that i'm sure some of you cannot sit down there so if we quickly uh work out that we can also say torque is equal to moment of inertia times z angular acceleration so this is another formula for torque okay so this tr is coming from force times radius so force it is the tension in the rope and radius it is just the uh the radius of the cylinder and then moment of inertia 
times acceleration the same way we say force is equal to mass times acceleration but in this case because it is torque so it's going to be a, a moment of inertia acting in place of mass and angular acceleration acting in place of uh, in place of um, in place of acceleration so so when we work out this when we work out that between this relation and we also work out that relation so when you substitute you make t as the subject of formula so we are getting rid of the tension and then we are going to find that a new relationship will be made and this new relationship will be equal to um, um moment of inertia is equal to mr squared open brackets um open brackets let me quickly go down there open brackets g over a and then we say uh, minus one okay so where is this formula coming from so this formula is coming from we are working out that one as equation one and that one as equation two so you solve them simultaneously so when you solve them simultaneously and you make moment of inertia as your as your subject the formula this is what we are going to have i would have done that but because this video i want it to be as short as i can so that you guys do not waste much of the time so from here we can quickly work out something whereby we know that the height is 1.8 please if you miss out the point make sure that you replay the video and you also reduce the speed so we were taught that the the height was 180 centimeters so we have changed the 180 centimeters to meters and we are going to have 1.8 meters so uh, guys in case you are behind or you have questions make sure that you contact me um or you visit our facebook page which is excel academy and you contact me and i'll be able to attend to you okay so that was our height now if like i said this this mass is falling down so when this mass is falling down there is the issue of gravity acting on it so we can use the linear uh, motion equation to look for the uh for the needed uh thing so let's look at uh the 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 guy which we have so here our major focus is to look for the acceleration remember in the question we were given the the mass we are given the time okay so if we work out quickly uh we are going to find that the height we have the time we have because we were taught the time the mass spent to fall down so what we are going to have is going to be um that expression whereby we replace everything and when we replace everything our acceleration will just be equal to uh 1.6 meters per second squared all right so thank you very much guys for following up my class please make sure that you uh subscribe anyway let's continue so we have found the acceleration we have been given uh, the acceleration and we also know that the mass is 0 0.1 kg and the radius is equal to um is equal to uh 0 0.24 uh, four. so since we have that we can quickly look for what is needed so what is needed here we now look for we get our formula moment of inertia is equal to um m r squared uh like that so this formula is the formula we derived on top there this formula is the formula we derived on top there so if we plug in we are going to find that our moment of inertia will be easily worked on like i've just replaced that so if we calculate well you find that the moment of inertia will be equal to uh that which is 0 0.0295 uh 
kg meters per second okay then we know that uh, tr is equal to um, moment of inertia times a over r so this is also torque and that is also torque formula so if we work out that we are going to find that t which is tension is equal to um, a over r squared so this guy is coming from this formula which has, i derived on top there so i'll just go quickly quickly and not waste your time and yeah it's dark and i need to go and have a class so from there guys we can work it out whereby we replace the values since we have found everything and our tension in the rope which we have been asked we can easily work it out so that's the value of our tension for question number two so i have found the moment of inertia which have been asked and i've also found the tension in the rope so guys uh that's how easy these questions can be worked on make sure that uh, you subscribe to our channel and also to register with excel academy okay so it's time for us to now quickly marry some so let's marry together i know some of you have gone to the shows have gone to play around with parents or alone and i'm sure you have come across a merry-go-round this is where now you guys enjoy the 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 swinging uh but for you my friend from the combos you know let's stick to those merry-go-round money made merry-go-round whereby you tie a rope and then you are swinging so whether you have gone to the show or you were doing to my swinging at home you are just experiencing the same things anyway so a children's merry go round consists of an essential uniform 150 kg uh, disc is rotating at 15 rev per minute about a vertical axis. The radius of the disc is 6 centimeters if an 80, ooh, 80 kg persons, this should be someone very old like myself maybe someone very old so sit down on the edge what is its new angular um angular speed so this guy is more like the merry-go-round is swinging and then an old person like you jumps on it at the edge and then when you do that you find that you enjoy the movement so there is a change of angular momentum there so we are going to use the concept of change of angular momentum so i'm just going to show you some picture of uh, someone's grandfather who um who uh who is enjoying himself look at him yeah our friend there our papa our granny our father whatever you can call him um um He's enjoying the merry-go-round after taking his grandchildren for the show. Please, when you grow up, you should also do that. Okay, so in this case, we need to understand that the solid disc has moment of inertia and this old man also has moment of inertia. So quickly, when we work out, we can say the moment of inertia of the solid disc is mr squared over 2 which is just simply half uh, times mr squared so this value you always be given in the exam in case you are not given you can ask the 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 lecturer your tutor or your teacher so from here guys you can find that our our values for the mass it was 150 times the radius which is 6 so we work it out we are going to uh, find that our moment of inertia is just simply equal to 2700 2700 kg per meter squared okay so kg per meter squared are the SI units of moment of inertia 
all right guys so i'm really fast on this video because i need to rush for a class which is supposed to happen in one hour time but i need to travel so please uh, register with excel academy visit our page and subscribe to this channel for free videos okay let's quickly look at the moment of inertia of the man because when this old man jumped on the merry-go-round he had to possess a moment of inertia okay so if we look at the man the man the formula for moment of inertia of a human being is just m r squared take note of that in some questions they won't give you that but for some they'll give you so m r squared that's the moment of inertia for a man so we plug in 80 kg for the big man and then uh six um six meters which is just the radius of the disc okay so if we work it out there we're going to find that the moment of inertia of this man was 2880 kg uh, meters squared okay that was the moment of inertia but what we are interested in is for us to look for the final velocity and for us to look for the final velocity we need to use the the principle of change in momentum so you find that the 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 sum of initial momentum is equal to the sum of final momentum okay so using the above values of inertia of the disk and the person we can find the angular speed the final angular speed so we know as i've said sum of moment of inertia is equal to sum of final moment of inertia so moment not moment of inertia momentum sorry so we know uh, that angular momentum is equal to moment of inertia times angular speed moment of inertia times angular speed this moment of inertia as i said is just replacing mass for linear and angular speed is replacing um uh acceleration in linear okay so we can easily plug in we can say since the final the final is between two things the disc and the uh the human being so we are going to say uh the disc and the human being so we are going to say 28,000 to 2880 plus 22, and then multiply by the final angular velocity which we are looking for like that and then this is equal to the initial you know when this thing was moving around this man was not there when this thing was moving around this man was was not there so meaning the we can't add the sum because for the uh, angular momentum for the man it is zero it wasn't there okay so we are just going to consider for the disc um which is 2700 times uh the times the angular velocity which you have given which is 15 uh, rev per minute okay so quickly guys i'm not going to write that down so wherever you are please you add that and you also work out that and then you are going to find that the final speed will just be equal to 7.2 uh 7.26 revolutions per meter i'm sure this is what we were asked to find in our last question and please make sure that you subscribe to our channel and you also register with us so this is what we were asked and have um totally explained it so please uh, make sure that you also contact me on, on online uh seven four eight four zero six sixteen 
or you can contact me on uh, 0965887474. So please, if you're not a registered member, make sure that you register with us by WhatsApping me on that. So yeah, for those who are not in Zambia, you can just put uh, plus 26 and then also there you can also put plus 26 okay so you can whatsapp me on those numbers and me and my team we are going to attend to you thank you very much guys for following up subscribe to our channel and press on the uh, notification button have a blessed day thank you